Australian filmmaker Yolanda Ramke has expanded her much-watched short film Cargo to feature length, co-directing with Ben Harling. The essence of the short film is the core of the story of Andy Martin Freeman trying to find a safe haven and protection for his daughter Rosie after a plague has infected society, turning everyone who is bitten into flesh-eating, and I hate to call them zombies because that term isn't used in the film, but that's pretty much what they are. His wife Kay, Susie Porter, was the first to be bitten and much against her will, bit into Andy, who now has 48 hours to find a carer for his daughter. At the same time, young Aboriginal girl Toomey, Simone Landers, is trying to track down clever man, David Gulpalil, whom she believes can cure her infected father. Andy and Toomey are forced into close contact when they're caged by morally bankrupt redneck Vic, Anthony Hayes. The subtext of the film is the ruination of the land and its potential renewal in Aboriginal hands. It's remarkably tense and effective with Geoffrey Simpson's photography of our wide brown land, one of the key assets. All the performances are fabulous. Martin Freeman, stoic as the protective father. And young Simone Landers, really impressive as Toomey. Anthony Hayes does bad guys so well. You can almost feel the malevolence seeping from his paws. And it's always beautiful seeing Gulpalil on screen. The music is at times a bit insistent, but it certainly ramps up the tension. Danny Cooper's and Sean Laheef's editing is seamless. Ultimately, this is a compassionate film. Its final scenes are really quite moving. It's a fine expansion of an original idea. And it is a very clever idea, I think, at the centre of this, the way that the, the destruction of the land, the fracking, the, the coal mining, you know, coal is God, uh, and all of that has, has somehow created this virus that's, that's destroying people yeah. um, in, in the guise of, of these virals. It's, it's very, very cleverly done, and yet it's not laid on. It's not like a, a sort of message film in any sense at all. It's uh, the adventure at the centre of it, the everyman character of Martin Freeman sort of just, just carrying on with his life, trying to save his, his daughter is, yeah. is the central sort of... Or, well, you know, that device. primal urge to mm. save your child oh, is sort yes. of like really... And, you know, the kid is wonderful. I mean, it's played by four different little babies, but they're all fabulous. Susie Porter's terrific in a, a smallish role at the start as the wife, but she is absolutely... And, and Hayes, I mean, what a... He kind of symbolises the whole mining industry push in Australia in some ways. He's the evil miner, and it's so brilliantly done. You say you can well, almost feel the stuff, the evil pouring out of his pores, but you can almost smell the character uh, through the screen. Well, you know, there's, there's sort of like... It's like everybody who wants to exploit a terrible situation for their own advancement, you know, and he just represents... That's probably what capitalism's all about. I <laughs> think so too, but it's not, a, it's not really a, a, a protest film. It's very, it's very no. subtle and it is so beautiful. Well, it's directed. a zombie film, really. Well, it is a zombie film, but you don't see all that much of the zombies. They're, they're not as intrusive uh, as they are, say, in The Walking Dead. Oh, no, um, no, no. It's no. a bit more cleverly done, maybe, than The, the Walking Dead. Well, I'm oh, look, I'm giving this four stars. I'm giving it four as well. It's a terrific bit of filmmaking. There is a family by the river. I don't know if they're still alive. You don't know anything. You're just a stupid cover. That wasn't your dad anymore. I would like it if you came with us. Well, it's really terrific that we've got Yolanda and Ben in studio with us here to talk about the film. And I'm interested in, in expanding this short and from my memory, including and going into the Aboriginal uh, part of the film, of the feature. How did that develop from the short? Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, going from a, a seven minute piece to a full hundred minute film, mm. we knew we kind of needed to try and look for added layers of depth to the story. And once we sort of settled on the idea of it being an Australian set film as the short was, um, yeah, it was just starting to think about um, story wise and logic wise, um, survivors, in that genre that we maybe hadn't seen before and we felt that Indigenous survivors we hadn't we hadn't seen in a zombie film before and um, and there was a logic to the way that they would perhaps be able to survive off the land and and um, and and flourish. How did you get Martin Freedom mm. Freeman involved in this? Because you know 
international star, yeah. little Aussie film, yeah. Yeah. Oh, zombie film. I, oh, yeah, I know, I know. And we and he kind of is quite famous for not really liking zombie films as well, so we had a bit <laughs> of an uphill battle there. But um, it was just sort of the traditional approach. Um, we got the material to his agent and they liked it and passed it on and then he responded to the script and I think what he liked about it was a sort of more human element, mm. the fact that the, the sort of zombies are more peripheral in the story. Um, and I think it kind of helped as well having the... I mean, we're first-timers as well, so there's even less appeal on that front. But <laughs> yeah. uh, we also had, uh, you know, the backing of our agent, CAA. We had the backing of Christina Seaton, our producer, who was... She'd just come off doing the Babadook, so she was, like, a really hot thing. Mm. Um, and then also, I guess that was... Yeah, that was kind of the main kind of push. Well, plus also the short film's viral success as well. Yeah. So there was kind mm. of a bit of kind of... Validating factors. Already. What was he like? Yes, though? how did you direct him? How did you yes. actually direct someone of that stature? And uh... um, I don't really direct Martin Freeman, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, he doesn't need a lot of good. He knew it, like he's been doing this for such a long time. Yes. So I think really for us, it was more about just talking in advance about story, about tone, about the intention of the film, um, and just a lot of talking through sometimes on set, but as much as possible before about you know, what we were trying to say and then really it was just kind of we would let him kind of run with it. And David Goldpool, I, it's always, I mean, he's just magic on screen, yeah. whatever he's in. Yeah. How'd you get him? Oh, I mean, we didn't really think that it was a possibility, yeah, I don't no. think, because also because it's such a small part in a way and so we thought, um, but, you know, in terms of having, I think we kind of thought of it as sort of like a, an impact player, as like a sports metaphor. You want somebody that's going to come in and just like... Off the bench. Yeah, yeah. off the Take bench the and just, over. you know, mm. just, just kind of smash it and then kind of, you mm. know, uh, <laughs> kind of move back to the sidelines. So, and in terms of that, there was nobody, I mean, there was nobody else that we thought could mm. kind of deliver silently the way that he can, you know, yes. without words. He, he, he's magnetic. So, no, we were really delighted. Well, listen, the best of luck with this film. We're Thank you. Both very enthusiastic about Love it. Love this film, yes. And mm. good luck with the rest of your careers. Mm. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Time is there. Every second that we are going.